does anyone else feel like magnesium is having kind of a wellness moment? Apparently it helps you sleep deeper, stress less and wake up feeling like probably Gwyneth Paltrow. But if you're ever taking the wrong kind of magnesium, like I have, you also know that it can send you straight to the bathroom. So in this episode we talk about is magnesium supplementation legit? Which type of magnesium actually works? And do you really need to supplement or is it just overhyped? So let's find out. Kirsten, a former cardiac surgeon, corporate strategies, and the founder of the Leadership Clinic. And this is Have It All, my non bullshit podcast, where we talk all things about longevity, performance, and work life systems for high achieving professionals. And we cut through the trends, decode the science, so I decode the science for you, and I give you the tools that actually work in real life. And today I want to talk about magnesium. So, why does magnesium? actually matter in our bodies um, because what most people don't realize is that magnesium is involved in over 300 enzymatic processes in our body every day. It regulates everything from muscle function, from nervous system activity, energy production and yes sleep quality as well. And low magnesium in your body can show up in a couple of different symptoms. One could be a restless leg, so that's the syndrome where you have really restless legs at night and the legs keep on moving and you can't hold them still. Uh, it can result in poor sleep, in poor deep sleep actually. So if you're tracking with kind of a device, then your deep sleep levels are really, really low. That could be magnesium deficiency. Um, it shows up with anxiety, irritability, muscle cramps, so we probably know all those painful calf cramps we, we do get. So that could be a magnesium deficiency as well. And even sugar cravings or fatigue can be a result of magnesium deficiency. And it actually estimates that around 50 to even 75% of adults in industrialized countries, so the countries we are probably all living in, are magnesium deficient. So over half of the population. So why is that? So that could be due to poor soil quality where your vegetables grow in, it could be high stress, it could be overtraining, it could be caffeine and ironically even clean eating without magnesium rich foods um, just as leafy greens, nuts, legumes. So yes, if you're stressed, wired or not sleeping well, magnesium might be the missing link. But when it comes to magnesium supplementation, not all magnesium is created equal. That's why we break down the science and the types of magnesium that actually work and those types of magnesium we actually should avoid. And um, because when we talk about supplementation of magnesium, there are around seven plus forms of magnesium uh, at the moment available at the market and they do very different things. Um, so here's what you need to know. So maybe first we do have magnesium glycinide. So that's actually the best one for your sleep and helps with your anxiety. It's bound with glycine and that's a calming amino acid actually and that doesn't cause diarrhea like others do. I come to those in a second and um, magnesium glycinide is best taken at night and at a dosage of around 200 to 400 milligrams. The next up on the list is magnesium threonate. That one crosses the blood-brain barrier actually. That's why it supports uh, with cognition, with your memory, and your neuroplasticity. So I talked a bit about neuroplasticity in the last episode. Um, so go back to, I think it was episode 24 um, and listen to that one about neuroplasticity um, if you want to know more about that and how it works. And magnesium threonate is actually great for mental recovery and for brain fog if you're suffering from that. Um, it's more expensive than other forms, um, but there's actually really solid research backing it for brain health. So next up on the list to take magnesium once is magnesium malate. And that one's actually good for energy production and muscle pain. So it may help with your chronic fatigue, with microfibromyalgia, and um, all your muscle cramps. So there you wanna um, watch out for magnesium malate and take that. 
and use it during the day, not at night, because you have to use it during the day so that it actually helps you for your muscle cramps and muscle pains as well. So now to recap the forms of magnesium to take. So we had first magnesium glycinate, sleep and anxiety. Then we had magnesium threonate, that one's best for cognition, memory and the neuroplasticity. And then we have magnesium malate, what's better for energy production and muscle pain. So now we are moving on to the forms of magnesium you should avoid and not take. First on the list is magnesium oxide. So this is widely available. It's actually really cheap. It's poorly absorbed in your body, so it doesn't even reach your cells. It's often used in pharmacy brand sleep blends because it's cheap. And it actually, that's the one that causes loose stools and is actually not effective for sleep or performance. So if you are not searching for a laxative, but for magnesium that actually helps your body, and then magnesium oxide is the one to avoid. The next one to avoid is pretty similar. It's magnesium citrate and yes, that one works as well, but mostly in your colon. So it's used actually to clear bowels before surgery, so that's not the one you want to use for supplementation to keep your energy levels and your sleep. So this one is fine if you're constipated, but bad if you're trying to sleep without sprinting to the bathroom at 2 a.m. So magnesium oxide and magnesium citrate, those are the two to avoid. But now when you think, um, yeah, but how do I supplement magnesium now? Which ones of the three should I take and how? Um, this is actually what you should do. You sh should start low and go slow. So by that I mean begin with 200 milligrams of glycinide at night. Assess your tolerance, assess your sleep quality. Does it affect your sleep quality? Is it getting better? Do you see results? and um, if you already see results with 200 milligrams then stick to it. If you don't see in a any results then slightly increase over time. I would highly recommend that you use natural forms of magnesium wherever possible. So use food sources. Um, for example, magnesium is uh, found in spinach, in almonds and pumpkin seeds or black beans. So those are probably the three things to go for if you have a magnesium deficiency. And actually pair magnesium when you're using it for sleep with your wind down habits. So really create wind down habits at night, put your phone to the side because magnesium really helps you relax your nervous system, but it's not a sedative. So it doesn't help your sleep, but increases your or helps to increase your deep sleep. Um, you still need to dim the lights, stop scrolling and actually go to bed. So it's not something that helps you fall asleep. And then really watch your morning after energy when you're taking magnesium. If you feel groggy, reduce the dose. So if you feel more groggy taking magnesium than before, please reduce the dose. And if you feel calmer but clear, that's actually the sweet spot you want to go for. So don't expect wonders from magnesium, but it really it can help you support your sleep, your cognitive function and your muscle pain. So is magnesium worth it? Um, yes, but only if you choose the right form, the right dose and use it with purpose. So as I said before, different magnesium type for different purposes. And please don't expect miracles. It's magnesium, it's not a wonder drug. But you shouldn't underestimate magnesium either because it's actually it's one of the lowest risk, highest benefit supplements for stressed out high achievers. And it's probably doing more for your longevity than your fourth coffee a day. Please don't buy the cheap oxide blends that we talked about before from any pharmacy and then wonder why your stomach is a disaster. So my longevity verdict is actually probably a solid 8 out of 10. So is it worth the hype? Maybe it's a bit overhyped. You really have to be careful which form of magnesium you're going to, but it really can help and optimize parts of your longevity gain. So if it helps you increase your deep sleep, so that's great because your brain actually clears itself and get rid of the waste in deep sleep. So that could help you if you train a lot and you sweat a lot and lose a lot of magnesium, then obviously to help you reduce muscle cramps at night or muscle pain, it does help as well. So a solid eight out of 10. 
So that was it for today of this kind of science back practical breakdown that helps you cut through the noise and the longevity and supplementation game. And if you enjoyed it, then hit a follow and share this episode with your favorite overachiever who keeps complaining about their sleep as well. And if you want help with designing a complete performance system, so everything from your sleep to strategy to leadership, then book yourself a diagnostic session at the Leadership Clinic. You can find the link down below in the show notes. And yeah, that was it for today and I'll see you in the next one.